In this video, we're going to use some simple cartoons to help simplify and explain the physiology of hypercapnic respiratory failure and explore some of its common causes. Hypercapnia occurs when the lungs are unable to remove enough carbon dioxide from the body to keep blood CO2 levels within a normal range. CO2 is removed from the body on expiration. There is a direct relationship between the work the body puts into breathing and blood CO2 levels. If the respiratory effort is insufficient to keep up with the amount of CO2 being produced by cellular metabolism, then carbon dioxide levels in the blood will begin to rise. Blood CO2 levels are monitored by the body's chemoreceptors. These specialist cells are located in major blood vessels within the body and within the brain. The presence of CO2 stimulates them to produce nerve impulses. Higher blood CO2 concentrations will lead to a greater stimulation of the chemoreceptors and an increased production of impulses. These impulses are transmitted to the brain. The brainstem receives nerve impulses from the chemoreceptors as well as from other sources such as stretch receptors in the bronchi of the lungs. The brainstem then stimulates the lungs, dictating the pattern and the rate of breathing. Increased stimulation of the chemoreceptors will cause the brainstem to increase the respiratory effort. Bigger breaths and a faster rate of respiration will increase the rate that CO2 is removed from the body and will hopefully return blood CO2 levels back to a normal range. Problems arise when these regulatory mechanisms begin to fail. Several causes of hypercapnia can arise from issues within the brain. A serious neurological assault, such as a brain trauma, has the potential to suppress the respiratory centres of the brainstem. As a result, the lungs receive less stimulus from the brain, resulting in slower, shallower breaths. As the work of breathing reduces, blood CO2 levels will rise. We may also find that as the effort put into inhalation also decreases, blood oxygen levels will reduce as carbon dioxide levels rise. When hypercapnia is accompanied by hypoxia, it can be described as a type 2 respiratory failure. Some drugs can have suppressive effects on the respiratory centres. Opiates such as morphine or heroin have the potential, if too much is taken, to affect the brain, leading to a reduction in respiratory effort and increase in carbon dioxide. A significant consequence of hypercapnia can be a reduction in blood pH. When CO2 combines with water in the blood, it forms carbonic acid. An increase in blood CO2 will inevitably also mean an increase in carbonic acid, potentially pushing the body into a respiratory acidosis. Hypercapnia can also occur due to issues affecting the muscles that drive respiration. Some neuromuscular diseases can affect the function of the lungs. Guillain-Barre syndrome is an autoimmune condition in which the body's own defences attack the nervous system. The myelin sheath that insulates nerves becomes damaged, affecting the conduction of nerve impulses. In some cases, the nerves responsible for controlling the respiratory muscles become affected, leading to a reduction in respiratory effort and a rise in CO2. The chemoreceptors will be able to detect this change, promoting increased stimulation of the respiratory centres, but as the nerves transmitting the signals from the brainstem have become damaged, the lungs will be unable to respond effectively. Fatigue of the respiratory muscles also has the potential to lead to hypercapnia. A respiratory infection can affect the internal surface of the lungs, impairing the passage of oxygen from the lungs into the blood. The sufferers' respiratory muscles therefore have to put in more effort if they are to inhale enough oxygen to avoid hypoxia. The fast stretch fibres that drive the diaphragm are generally very resistant to fatigue. However, if sustained respiratory effort is required, the muscles may begin to struggle. This is especially common for sufferers of COPD, 
who, even at baseline, may be struggling to take in enough oxygen to meet their body's demands. As the muscles become fatigued, they will begin to struggle to take bigger breaths, reducing the amount of CO2 being cleared from the body per exhalation. The body will try to compensate with an increased respiratory rate, leading to more rapid, shallower breaths. However, as the respiratory muscles continue to fatigue, there will be the risk that blood CO2 levels will begin to rise and oxygen levels will fall. Hypercapnia may sometimes be resolved by treating a reversible cause. An opiate overdose, for example, may be reversed with an naloxone injection. In many cases, however, treatment will involve assisting the sufferer to take deeper and potentially more rapid breaths to help them blow off more CO2. This will generally involve the use of a mechanical ventilator, either by a non-invasive mask or an endotracheal tube. To avoid this video becoming too long, I have run through just a few of the common causes of hypnocapnia. I have included more details on my website. You can find a link in the description below, as well as some suggestions for further reading.